What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. In the previous episode, we had finally found ourselves a DVD player, which is great because we also found a copy of Monkey Bone. And so we can finally watch that damned movie because our parents can't tell us what to do. We also need, we found out that if in a more serious note, let's, let's bring it down a notch, more serious note, Firewing is totally back. And so Firewing was a giant dragon that wiped out all kinds of crazy stuff and apparently he wiped out Berlin and did all kinds of crazy stuff like 30 years ago. It's something that we need to be aware of, and since the dragon is coming back, we are apparently at odds with said dragon because we've discovered the plot, and now we are deep in the thick of it. Let's go talk to Paul Amsel and figure out what our next course of action is going to be. The room goes quiet as everyone struggles to process what you've just seen on the DVD. Finally, Dietrich breaks the silence. A dragon. Son of a bitch. Green Winter sent us up against a dragon. The Firewing. Amsel's voice is thick with dread. She lives. I'm really starting to regret the fact that I didn't just stay at the hotel. Iger ignores him. Wait a second, we don't know for certain. Dietrich lays a hand on Iger's shoulder. The evidence seemed pretty convincing to me, love. I'll even take it a step further. I think that the secret facility that we stumbled into was her lair. The room falls silent. Iger and Gloria exchange glances. After a moment, Dietrich continues. Just think about it. The Decker that Winters got those coordinates from was posting about the Firewing. Then she was killed by that same orcish bastard that attacked us after Monica died. That's a direct link between the dragon, the scarred orc, the scarred oak, the scarred orc, and the Harfield Manor. Apparently I'm feeling literary right now. I'm just like, the scarred oak! And then Winters was killed by the same thing that killed Monica. Exactly. My gut tells me that the dragon is down there, Threeto, someplace far beneath the surface. I think that we knocked on the door to her lair without even knowing it, and I think that given what we've seen, the dragon will do whatever it takes to keep us quiet about it. Okay, so going on the assumption that there is a dragon, and that she will come after us, what do you propose that we do about it? Well, we can say that we want to follow Winter's advice and go after Valclair. We can say keep it simple, head back there, kick in the door, kill the dragon. Problem, yeah, that's not going to happen. Our character, if we said that, it would give away just how woefully ignorant our character is. That's like going and saying that we're going to kill Harlequin. Which in Shadowrun Returns, Harlequin was a bitch, so it probably would have been really, really easy. But in the actual lore, Harlequin is basically, and that's actually probably not a terrible idea. We should probably go talk with Harlequin and be like, Hey, Harlequin, we're about to go kill a dragon. You want to come hang out with us? My face painted, homie. But we don't know him. Metagame thinking. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna follow Winter's advice and we're gonna find Valclair. Yeah, I think Three Toe is right. Finding Dr. Valclair should be our priority. If we're going up against a dragon, we need to find ourselves a dragon slayer. Winter spent 20 years searching for Valclair and it got him nowhere. How do you propose that we find him? With the help of an information broker. Well, I suppose we'll go talk to Altug then. For this, no. While Herr Burakazi is very capable, a task of this magnitude is beyond him. We need to make contact with the premier information broker in Berlin. We need to talk to Alice. Blitz scoffs at Amsel. Alice! Yeah, best of luck with that, and I hope you're rich, too. Amsel raises an eyebrow. For this, rich enough, even if only just. Who's this Alice? A most prominent figure in Berlin's shadow community. ex shock Wellenreiter. She provides information retrieval services for the F-State. Amsel turns to the computer console beside him and runs his fingers over a virtual keyboard. The machine begins to hum. If Winters was right, if Valclair is still alive, she can help us find him. The console spits out a stick of black plastic. Amsel plucks it from the computer and hands it to you. Here, your key to speak with Alice. A cred stick? Amsel nods. An encoded cred stick, yes. 10,000 Nuyen. Alice will not show her face for less. This represents the last of my personal savings, Threeto. Make this meeting count. 10,000 Nuyen just to talk to her? Amsel nods. Her standard fee. Alice is in a position to ask it, and we're in no position to argue. Just like I said, why doesn't anyone listen to me? Sounds like a fair trade to me then. I'll take care of it. Good man. Take the U-Bond to the Outstat Spando. From there, you'll find a connecting tube that the locals refer to as the rabbit hole. You'll find a method of contacting Alice there. Don't call it that in front of her though. Word on the street is that she hates it. Please hurry, and while you're out, I will work on acquiring new contacts for the team. Alice is the best, is the best there is at what she does, and her services carry a price tag to match. I don't suppose there's any- I'm feeling really kind of- like, we're not high enough level to be making these sorts of gambles. I'm feeling sort of nervous about the situation. Are there any jobs up on here that we could take in between? Let's look at our new messages. No new messages. Jobs directory? Come on, jobs. I'm scared of dragons. Don't make me go out there. I don't want to do it. Well, damn. It looks like we have no choice but to travel down the said rabbit's hole. I don't want to be digging around in any rabbit's holes. I don't think my fingers are small enough anyways to really kind of get in there. I could never be a rabbit veterinarian. 
That's not something that I could never do. I would need extra toolish just to make it work. Let's step outside into the shadows and get running. It was smart. It didn't give me the money. I'd be like, woo, let's go on a cram spree. We'd be out there doing nitro, just like dancing in the streets for like three weeks, come back all broke and looking all hobo-y, meth-mouthed out. <laughs> Ansel would be like, so what happened with... What happened with that whole thing with the information broker? I'd be like, oh yeah, I, I got waylaid. There were substances involved. I apologize. <laughs> Let's jump down into the U-Bahn. If it asks me to assemble a team right here, I might bite some guns first. Not bite some guns, but I may buy some guns. I realize that sounded a little bit ambiguous when it came out of my mouth. It could have gone either way. My linguistic skills are lacking right now because I just ate lunch. Let's see, and it wasn't even that good of a lunch. It was just like chips and nothing else. It was like chips and a Diet Coke. Terrible, terrible lunch. It's the kind of lunch that really heartbreak and dreams are broken by. What is this? The only active console. Hold on, let's step away for a second. I saw something else that I could click on. Probably just like drugs over in the corner. Yep, hyper. Got ourselves some drojas. Let's put it in our stash. Away with you drugs! And maybe we'll go down here. No, I, uh, I didn't tell you. Not, not go the other way. No, not that. I know it looks like an arcade machine, which is getting you all excited. I'm like, ooh, Smash TV, let's play. But no, that's not what that is, I don't think. Is there anything in the refuse over here? No, sniff it out, doggy. See if you can find it. Well, it might be an arcade machine. Looks like there's pinball machines and stuff over there, so that may be... Oh, it is. Let's see. Oh, it is. I was totally wrong. It is an arcade machine. Well, then. I, I think I can't think of what my favorite arcade game was. I'm gonna think about it while we talk. The only active console in this derelict span of U-Bahn platform is an old video game arcade machine. The CRT monitor set into the machine's cabinet glows invitingly. Cheerful pixelated graphics swirl and dance on the screen. Investigate it. At the base of the controller panel, you find a cleverly hidden input port. The port is shrouded in black plastic and it appears to be the approximate shape of a typical cred stick. Well, here it goes. We insert Amsel's down payment on the information. Internal motors grip the cred stick and pull it into the machine. It disappears into the port and the screen goes black. Moments later, a video image fills the screen. The picture is dark and grainy, a far cry from the bright, colorful sprites that previously inhabited the gameplay. On screen is a dimly lit office. The place looks like it was pulled straight from an old detective movie, from the Venetian blinds on the windows to the great swaths of shadow that paint the walls black. Center stage, sitting behind a large mahogany desk, is a silhouette of an impressive-looking woman in a charcoal gray suit. The tip of a cigarette glows cherry red in the shadows. She leans forward into the light, and as you catch your first glimpse of Alice. Her face is all hard planes and sculpted angles, with high cheekbones and almond eyes. Her lips are painted a frigid blue, but the look on her eyes is even colder. A head of lustrous black hair is interspersed with flowing streams of cyan light. Alice exhale, <laughs> Alex exhales a plume of smoke, then tips her cigarette into the nearby ashtray. She fixes her eyes on you, and her lips curl into a humorless smile. We're on your dime, friend. Tell me what you're looking for. I need you to find someone for me, named Adrian Valclair. She raises an eyebrow. The Dragon Slayer? Interesting. He's been missing for a long time. Yes, he has. The question is, can you find him? She looks you in the eye and the smile disappears. Her voice is all business. If he's out there somewhere, I'll find him for you. He could be living under an assumed name in California Free State, and I'd still track him down. And if he's not alive, I'll tell you where you can find the corpse. Alright, I'm satisfied. Let's talk about the job. Alice steeples her fingers. Alright, here here's how this is going to work. When you give me the go-ahead, I'm going to start gathering information for you. Once I finish, you're going to bring me a cred stick encoded with an encryption key that I'll provide you. The cred stick will have 50,000 new yen on it. When I get my cred stick, you get your information. That's the deal. Take it or leave it. Price gouging, huh? For a neo-anarchist, you behave an awful lot like an old world profiteer. Alice smiles at you sweetly. I wasn't aware that there was a difference between the two. In all seriousness, I'm charging you for what the job is worth. Do you even know how much work it takes to find a digital ghost? There's gonna be wet work, breaking into government archives. Hell, I might even have to commission an expedition into the socks. This is a serious undertaking, my friend. Now, do we have a deal, or don't we? Alright. It's a deal. Okay, but remember, you say go and I go. From that point on, you're on the hook to pay me my fee. No returning back, no refunds. We square on this? Well, to hell with it. I'll pay you whatever you want. Just get me Valclair. Good. I'll be in touch. The screen goes black, and moments later, the machine reboots. The colorful sprites that you saw when you first approached the arcade cabinet return. There's nothing more to see here. Alice is gone. 
I bet if I had to go by how many quarters I spent, it was probably Gauntlet Legends. That's probably what I spent the most money on in arcades. I had this one machine at a skating rink that I used to play on, and I still remember my... I, I remember my login and my password. It was VEK, and it was 666. And it was... I mean, it's a simple password. That was probably the password for every 15-year-old heavy metal kid ever, but... In any case, it was badass. I had like a level 80 character on an arcade machine, and you didn't even want it. I could have bought the game probably four or five times over for the amount of quarters I put in that thing. But you played arcade machines. For you in the younger generation who never had arcades, I pity you. I really, really do. Like, it sucks that you didn't get to live through the arcade generation. I was square in the middle of the arcade generation. It was the greatest thing ever. Like, one quarter and you could just play a game until you died if you were really good at it. I had a friend that used to beat Street Fighter on one quarter. That's just what he used to do. He'd beat it on different characters and then he'd leave the cinematic playing and you could see Guile go be a family man. People in the arcade would be like, whoa, because they'd never seen the cinematics before because this is before it was published for any consoles. Pretty badass. Old memories, making me feel all tingly and warm on the inside. Three Toe, did you make contact with Alice? Yes, I did. She accepted your payment and I ordered the search for the information we need. Good. I can't imagine that this will be cheap. What was her stated price? You're right on that count, 50,000 new yen. He shrugs. It's about as I had expected. Thankfully, we're prepared for this. I've established contact with a number of new clients. You can find information on the jobs locked in your mission computer. One job's file is on there already. While you're working to earn Alice's fee, I'll continue to dig for cl clues about Firewing. I was reading Fuhrer and Clues at the same time, and for some reason, because like I'm mildly, I'm dyslexic, just so you guys know. I like mush things together. Sometimes I have to like close my eyes and wait for the words to like resettle. It sucks. If she is in fact roosting under the Harfeld Manor, then there must be some evidence to support the fact. A dragon is a large thing to hide, after all. Be careful, Paul. Remember what happened to Monica. I will never forget. Don't worry, 3-2. I'm going to conduct my investigation the old-fashioned way, through contacts, deduction, and careful observation. I'm not going to jack into the Matrix until this entire sorry episode is finished. It's probably wise. Speaking of doing things the old-fashioned way, Malid is working to recover some information off of those other DVDs. It's a painstaking process, and it won't be quick, but she's optimistic that she can give you, she'll be successful in time. Finally, I've been checking up on our friend, the orc with the skin grafts. I haven't heard anything back yet, but I'll keep you appraised if the situation develops. Sounds good, Paul. I'll go check up on those jobs. One last thing before you go, Three Toe. Samuel Beckenbauer wanted me to pass a message on to you. You know him? The orc who runs the shelter across the way? Yeah, we met. Ah, well, he has a job for you. He wouldn't discuss it with me, but he promised it would prove worth your time. I'll keep it in mind. That was the guy we didn't give him any money to begin with because we're broke as a joke, and I don't want to end up without hope. So it looks like this is going to be the objective that dictates the remainder of our game. In Shadowrun, if you've ever played pen and paper Shadowrun, you'll know that you always have like that prime directive, like that one thing that you're working towards. I typically, when I DM, I tend to use one character with the best backstory as the catalyst for everything else, and then I fold everybody else into it to make it all work so it's a compelling argument for everybody to work together. That being said, at the same time, you tend to end up with a greater goal, but you can't control players. They tend to just wander all over the place, which is exactly what I'm about to do. Let's check in on everybody really fast. I know we had an episode that was full of talking before. Ooh, that's, that's, we need to talk about what I saw in your aura. I knew this would happen. Look, my aura is my own business and none of yours, understand? And so, we can say that her aura looked dangerous and so it's our business. We can tell her that she's protective of the past, and we need to figure out because something terrible is happening to her, or we can say... ...that her aura saw me. Agreed, but the thing I saw that was tied to your aura is as much my business as it is yours. It saw me, Glory. It saw you? That's what you're worried about? A shrill laugh escapes from Glory's lips. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> Wanna know a secret? It's been watching you for your entire life. You just never knew that it was watching until now. Some of us have bigger problems. For some of us, it takes a more direct interest. But I fixed that problem years ago. She gestures down at the vintage chrome that riddles her small body. The interest is still there, but it can't do anything about it anymore. Not unless I let it, so drop it, alright? She pauses for a moment and the hard expression on her face softens. Look, I, I understand that you're trying to help me, and I appreciate it. I, re I really do, but I'm not ready to talk about this yet. Maybe when we know each other a little bit better, alright? Until then, just give me some space. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Well, you just- <laughs> she goes suit yourself like she's a gangster. I was like, oh, uh, you told me that we were gonna talk about this later. Iga? This is the best of times. Come back later if you want to talk. Alright, so she's giving us the cold shoulder. Dietrich, sir! My tattooed amigo. Okay, so he's doing the same thing. He's stonewalling us. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can't soften that stone wall up with a little bit of the old New Yen polish. 
Let's check our jobs directory. Wait, statuses of the Alice Fund. Okay, so there's a new idea right here. Current funds, $10,000. So she holds that in escrow. Okay, that's cool. I wonder if this game randomly generates missions for me. I'm going to be so excited. It'll be like going back to the Sega Genesis game. I'm, I, I would bounce up and down and be like, Yee! Like, that would be the sound that I make when I get excited. And so you pray that I never get excited in places like the opera. Because then I'm just like, Yee! And then they're singing similarly. I mean, there's always that person that's like way up there in the alto. Let's go talk to the guy that's running his own charity right now. Samuel of Beckenbauer. Hello again, my friend. What can I do for you? I heard that you wanted to talk about a job. Yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks for coming so promptly. He takes a deep breath, slowly releases it, and looks you in the eye. Tell me, what do you know about the Humanist Pulla Club? I have... I think the Humanist... I don't know, it's been a while. Let's have him explain it. Not a lot, I don't pay attention to politics. Humanus may call itself a Pulla Club, but its goals are anything but political. The organization's true objective is to spread fear and hatred of the metahuman races. Humanus's bloody rhetoric helped to instigate the Night of Rage. The Night of Rage? A worldwide race riot that took place in February 2039. Thousands of innocent metahumans were attacked, beaten, and killed. Women and children were corralled into warehouses for protection and then burned alive when the structures were then put to the torch. This is what Humana stands for. This is the agenda that its leaders strive to advance. They will not be satisfied until all metahumans everywhere are driven from the face of the Earth. Well, disgusting. And this job of yours has something to do with Humanus? He nods. Yesterday, I overheard one of my assistants talking on his comm. He was yelling, clearly agitated. I questioned him, and he confided in me. What he told me made my blood run cold. Let me guess where this is going. Humanus is planning something, an attack of some kind. He nods. Yes, I believe so. The Berlin chapter of Humanus has arranged to acquire a large shipment of an extremely hazardous chemical. Their leader, Volker Stahl, is a vicious ideologue. It goes without saying that whatever he intends to do, it won't be good for us. I want you to infiltrate the smuggling operation that is delivering the shipment. I don't know why I emphasized that weird, but I did. Once you arrive at the Humanus compound, you'll find out what they're planning to do with the chemical and put a stop to it. What makes you think they'll talk to me? I'm no more human than you are. Many of the smugglers are metahumans. If you travel with them, Humanus will allow you into their compound, and the rest will be up to you. Well, as long as they can get me in the front door, I can take care of the rest. He nods. Good. From your reputation around the cruise baser, I knew that you were the right man for the job. Would it just be easier to hijack the shipment? Why allow it to get to the Humanus compound at all? He shakes his head. No, stopping the shipment would not stop Humanus. They'd merely acquire another. For a pack of snarling racists, they're extremely well-funded. Let's talk compensation. What does this pay? I've contacted the sister organizations across Berlin and taken up a collection. Between us, we've raised 22,000 new yen as a- oh my god. As a payment. I trust that that will be sufficient? I know how much money you nonprofits keep for yourselves. You can scrape together more cash than that, and you know it. He lets out a deep sigh. You're wrong about my organization. I keep nothing for myself. Nothing. But I will see what I can do. I might be able to call in some favors and raise you another 500. Yeah, in the scale of 22,000. In the meantime, I'm in. He nods. Excellent. I'm relieved. I'll make the arrangements for your meeting with the smugglers. Their leader is an elf who calls himself Maxim. Take the U-Bond to Shatten Nest, and you will find him there. Best of luck to you, Shthrito, and good hunting. Know that what you're doing is a great thing for the metahumans of Berlin. Your efforts will not go unnoticed. I didn't know the jobs were going to be paying like that. 22,000 new yen for a job? That's pretty hefty payment. I mean, for just starting out in the game like we are, I wouldn't pay my players like that early on. I'd throw the first couple out just like, yeah, 2,000, 3,000. Just kind of see what they do, get a feel for them, but I guess they're throwing out the big numbers. Then again, I could just spend the money on myself. I don't have to put it into the account. Let's also check on the other contracts because I like to have a lot of things on my table. I like to have a lot of little dishes that I can put my fork down into, or my chopsticks, depending if I'm having dumplings or something. Let's see here. We can go for the jobs directory. We have a pharma cleanup job. We also have, oh, that one's active. Okay, so let's look at the pharma cleanup job. Amsel's face winks onto the screen. Here you will find the complete transcript of my conversation with Herr Fuchs, a potential client. The job seems to be relatively straightforward and the payout is reasonable. One word of caution before you proceed. There are aspects of this run that you might find morally troubling. Be sure to read and understand the specifics of the job before accepting. If you do accept, you will be expected to carry out the requirements of the job in full. After reading the transcript, you may choose whether or not to accept the job. If you respond in the affirmative, our client will be notified, and I will make all the necessary preparations for the run. Herr Amsel? Yes, I'm here. To whom am I speaking? You may call me Herr Fuchs. Very well. Please describe the work that you would like to have done. Straight to the point. I like that. Very well. I would like to retain your team's services to clean up a mess. 
Go on. My employers dispatched a team of operatives to conduct a quiet operation at a local Sharing Pharma AG lab. Unfortunately, they botched the job. The team was eliminated, but we have reliable information that one of the operatives had been taken captive. If this rogue agent were to spill information leading back to my employers, it could lead to a corporate war. A great many lives would be lost. My employers would like nothing more than to prevent such a tragic turn of events. Ah, I see. You wish to retain my team's services to tie up loose ends. Exactly. The captive operative is a rigger by the name of Thorvald Instad. We need him neutralized before he can form on us to his captors. As Instad and his team have already put the facility on high alert, stealth will not be an option. Your team will need to shoot its way in, eliminate Instad, and exit the facility. A straightforward enough task and well within my team's capabilities. What are you offering in terms of pay? 15,000. It's non-negotiable. Very well, I'll pass the offer on to my team. Very good. Good day, Herr Amsel. The text field disappears. A single line of text pops up onto the center of the screen taking its place. Accept the job? Absolutely, because I've got a good feeling we're probably going to be able to recruit that rigger. It gave him a name. Anytime they give him a name, it would have just been like a rigger. Run accepted. Client notification sent. Let's do this thing. How do I go and undertake it? Oh, I don't want that. Go away. I don't want to go through that again. Too much reading. Not right now. All right, ladies and gents. Let's be on our way. We're going to do the pharma laboratory complex first because it sounds more action-packed. So I think I'm going to do that on the front side. Also, did I get some karma or something? I got one karma, so that's not much. I suppose we'll just be on our way then. I do wish that we could pull... We could do like a Mabari Warhound type thing with... Dante, and he could be on our team. That'd be badass if I could be like, Dante, slash! And he would have little cyber claws, and he'd be like, Rawr! and he'd just like run in and do like little doggy stuff. I like animals. Although I suppose that would be kind of a mean thing to do, using an animal as a weapon, because then he gets shot. And I like my dogs without, I like them bullet hole negatory. I like them to have, when I ask my dog, do you have any bullet holes? I like him to answer in the negative. I don't know where I can, I think, I need to get some med kits or something. He's got no med kits. Who has my med kits? It's probably in that clinic. It's in the clinic. Let's go to the clinic and see if we can't get some med kits. Because on the last run, we used a lot of med kits. And if we're going into direct fire, I'm going to want to do the same thing. Where I'm going to have lots of disposable things that I can heal myself with. In the tabletop game, I think essence also affects how well you can heal people magically, as I recall. Without actually having to use a med kit. As you approach the elf, you notice that he's in mid-conversation. His lips move rapidly and his voice comes out in a low, quiet tone. The glossy plastic shell of a high-grade comlink glints on his wrist. Doing your best to look uninterested, you lean in slightly and strain your ears. You find that you can make out the doctor's end of the conversation. No, no, that's, the price I'm quoting you is more than fair. Well below market value. In fact, if you can't pay it, that's your problem. Yes, I know that the price has gone up. This is a seller's market. Well, then you'll just have to find more money or go without. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I have a patient. He presses a button on his comm link and looks up at you, a million dollar smile on his face. Sorry about the wait, my friend. Welcome to the triage cyber clinic. He extends his hand to you. I'm Dr. Xavier Exibel. Eskibel. There we go. Eskibel. Xavier Eskibel. And your name is? Threeto. A pleasure. Pleased to meet you, Threeto. What can I do for you today? I found this schematic. You think you can hook me up with this chrome? Huh, very nice. The design appears to be simple enough, and yeah, I should be able to provide you with this. It won't be cheap, though. Let's look at his cyberware that he has. I don't know if they modified the amount of cyberware that goes into the game now. What was that injector? The auto injector. Your accuracy is increased by 6, and your incoming damage is increased. Okay, so it weakens you, while at the same time making you stronger. I'm probably going to want to replace... I don't see Cyberize here. I'm sorry, they have Cyberize. They call them Vision Magnification Eyes now. They should be called Cyber Eyes. I like the old names better. We'll fall out on there and we'll get some medical supplies. Now, I don't know what we're packing with regards to a lot of this stuff. However, I am going to buy up all of these. And then maybe an extra Pomona because we used one in the last run. That's going to cost us $450. we will send that to... Let's uninventory everything right now. Because this is dreadfully disorganized anyways. And I like all my colors and everything to be in the proper spot. So we'll call that air barrier. Over here we'll go with the heal and then we'll go with the attack. There! I like that because the colors aren't segmented all over the place. Why that bothers me I don't know but it does. I'll give him one med kit but it doesn't really matter because he's got a heal. I'll give him a bemona just in case because we want him to come back when he falls. We'll confirm that. And then I think when we jump into the run we're going to be allowed to choose the equipment for each of our members? I don't know. Maybe they re-equip themselves in between runs. We'll have to pay attention to it.
Probably should have kept that focus. Should have kept the fuck use, but, you know, focus is always in short supply here at the Nerd Castle. Let's jump back into our storage location. I'll re-equip myself so that we don't have any problems. I just really want to make sure that we're prepared. I do the same thing when I play pen and paper. I'm one of those guys that sits around, like, itemizing all of my gear and, like, choosing which pocket it goes into and all that crazy stuff. Where I'm just like, alright, well, I need the gun over here just in case I need to cross-draw. Like, what if they attack me while I'm sitting? I don't think this is what I need. This is what I need. Oh, I can equip other people. Oh, my dog can have an outfit and what? What? No way. Give my dog a grenade. I mean, I don't know how he's going to use the grenade. He lacks thumbs, but still, it's cool. It's cool. Oh, I can't give that to anybody else. Okay. Well, then I suppose I'll take... I'll take the focus and let's take the cram just in case. You never know when you're going to need like a million AP. And while it might be better to give it to somebody like the sniper so that she can get all twitchy and like go on a meth sniping rage. That'd be pretty cool too. Take like five shots with a sniper rifle, just bim bam bomb. Put people down on the ground. I don't know Moritz plots. I don't remember where I was going. I think it was Shotten Nets or something. Shotten Nets. A lone figure stands in the U-Bond station. It's Dietrich. He raises a bottle at your approach, then tosses it away. Figured I'd run into you here, boss. Wanted to be sure that I caught you before you headed off. He takes a deep breath and slowly releases it and looks you in the eye. Three Till, we need to have a talk about this Humanus gig. Alright, but make it quick. Well, I've got a history with Humanus. I fought him back in 39 during the Night of Rage. Hell of a thing, that was. I remember the terror, the senseless violence, and the murdered children. I remember this little dwarf boy. They stuffed his body in the gutter, Three Till. I can still see his face all bruised and broken. To this day, it makes my blood boil. Anyways, long story short, we beat him. Berlin's punks and anarchists all came together and we stomped the living dreck out of those racist pigs. A lot of good people died that night, but we put down some of the bad ones too. So why are you telling me all this? So that you'll understand. I don't like Humanus. I hate that swine, and there's one of them that I've got to try and save. My nephew, Alexander. He's a good kid, 3 -tow. I don't believe for a second that he's bought into their bullshit. But I have it on good authority that he signed on with Humanus all the same. Why would he join a hate group if he isn't racist? Can't say for certain, but I have pretty strong guesses. Alexander's dad is a miserable sack of a man. I wouldn't put it past him to look at Humanus as a boarding school. They feed and house their recruits, and that's money that he'd rather spend on himself. So I'm asking you, as a personal favor, let me come along on the run. I have to get into that compound, 3 and I have to find Alexander. I have to turn him around before those animals make him do something unforgivable. Alright, you're welcome. Thanks, boss. I never doubted you'd bring me, of course. You're too good a man for that, but it's good to hear it all the same. We're not going to do this one right now. We're going to go to the other one, and honestly, we're not going to have time to do it, unfortunately. Let's go. I wanted to get started in this episode, but in between all the organization and all the other random stuff that happened, the other U-Bond tunnel, there it is. This one says Moritz Platz as well, so I'm willing to bet they probably all go like the same place. I'll take a brief scan around just to make sure that there's not an extra one that I have overlooked as we've been playing the game. Oh no, this one takes us down here too. So how do you go to separate jobs? Is it just you click here and then you it asks you which one you want? Okay, so let's do the pharma lab first because I, I want some action. Let's get in and kill some people. And so in addition to your team, your fixer has access to a small network of mercenaries in the Berlin area. It can be hired mission to mission after you complete the missions. Okay. So obviously I want to have a Decker with me. Dietrich is not necessary on this one. We could have Glory and we could have Iger. And they do re-equip themselves. I'm probably always going to bring my free options if I can because that's wasted money. Well, it's not that expensive. We got Nixie, Alner. He's a drug addict, so I don't want to hire him. That can lead to all sorts of problems. If you've ever played an RPG and you have a drug addict in your group, it's always a pain. I had a friend who played a nitro-addicted dwarf who was a melee character, and it was just... It was ridiculous. He was constantly just wrecking shit up, just making things into problems that didn't need to be problems. Let's confirm, and we'll zone in. And once we zone in, I think that's where we'll stop. We're going to try not to do anything right on the front end of the episode. We'll try and just kind of go in low and soft if we can. 
Loose ends. Your client has hired you to tie up loose ends at the site of a Bosch cloak and dagger operation. One of the operatives from the failed mission has been captured by the Knight Errant Security Forces. It's only a matter of time before he talks. Your job is simple. Kick in the door, find the operative, and put a bullet in his guts before he can spill him. Or, you know, maybe recruit him to our team because riggers are super awesome. They are amazing. I loved Woogie, and I absolutely want to have Woogie 2.0. Okay, so we get another chance to equip over here. I'm going to... Can I give... Oh, I can give them equipment as well. So they come with their own stuff. Iger, let's throw you a frag grenade. Blitz, let's throw you a Bamona kit because you don't have one. Give you a little bit of a backup plan in case you die. Give you a Bamona kit. I can bring Dante on the run. Well, can I? Because Dante's here. Weird. Obviously, I can't re-equip their weapons, it would appear. So the weapons are only for my benefit, from what I can tell. He's got a smart link, which means, realistically, I could give him the Ares Predator. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of interested in whether I'm going to be able to upgrade my own guys at some point. All right, so we have Karma available. I'm not going to spin her. It's only one Karma. Who cares? The reception area of the Sharing Pharma AG Lab looks normal enough. The synth leather couches were obviously designed for more for appearance than for comfort, and the blue steel walls are gently illuminated with energy-efficient recessed lighting. All in all, it's a perfect example of the typical corporate design sensibilities, bland, generic, and safe. An overturned houseplant is the only sign that something might be amiss in the lab ahead. You ready for this, fearless leader? According to what Herr Fuchs told us, the entire complex is going to be crawling with hired security. I'm guessing Knight Errant, but we'll see. It's going to be a hell of a fight. I've been itching for a stand-up fight. Let's do this thing. And that's where I'm going to break off the episode. I know you guys are gnashing your teeth right now. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Take care out there in the shadows, chummers.